So negative exponents kind of work like this, and again, this is just kind of a brief explanation, is if we move up, let's say 2 to the power of 1 is one, uh, 2, sorry, and 2 to the power of 2 is 2 times 2, which is 4, and 2 to the power of 3 was, would be 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Well, that's kind of going in the up direction right here for the exponents. We're just adding 1 to each exponent. But what if we were going down? Well, then we're subtracting 1 from the exponents. And for these numbers, we're dividing by 2 each time. So if I wanted 2 to the power of 0, so again, I'm just subtracting 1 from the exponent, I would have 2 divided by 2, which is 1. Which is why anything to the power of 0 is 1, because you're just dividing it by itself. But what if we took this to the next level and made this 2 to the power of negative 1? Well, then we would have 1 divided by 2, which would be 1 half. Well, this kind of means that really what we're doing is reciprocating this, because if we continue this process by dividing by 2, so 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 4, which is the same as 1 over 2 squared. Um, see how we kind of reciprocated this fraction into this one? So this 4 to the power of negative 1, we're going to say is 4 to the power of negative 1 over 1, which gives us something to reciprocate visually, even though we don't really need the 1 in the denominator. And when we do reciprocate that, we get a 1 over 4 to the power now of a positive 1. But once again, we don't usually show an exponent when it's just 1. All right, on this next one, e, that already is a fraction, so we don't really need to write a to the power of negative 5 over 1. It's inside a fraction. So if we reciprocate these, then we make the power of a, which was negative, into a positive. And we can write that over 1, but once again, it's just some math people get really upset if you do that. It hurts their brain. I'm serious. That's, that's for reals.